Good morning. You may be seated. We are so glad you're worshiping with us today, whether you're here in person or online. Today is a communion Sunday. For those of you online, if you would want to gather some juice and some bread so you can join us in communion later on during the service, and then we'll have the elements for you here for those of us in person. It's the second Sunday of Advent, and as we've been doing, we're inviting some of our members who are at home who can't come to worship to be a part of our Advent services. And this Sunday, we'll be entering the home of the Busbys. Last Sunday, we lit lit the candle of hope, remembering the hope which is in Christ. Today, we light the second candle of Advent, the candle of peace. And if you'd like to join along in our Advent liturgy, I'll read the first line and then you will follow along in the highlighted section. God has a dream of peace for the world, and we dream it too. We dream of a peaceful world full of wolves and leopards and lions, eating and sleeping and dancing with lambs, kids, and calves. We dream of a peaceful world where the nations come together, where war is a memory, and we eat at one table. On this day, we light this candle in peace and remember the Lord of all, who brings peace surpassing all understanding. Let us quiet our minds and our souls as we go to God in prayer. God, on the second Sunday of Advent, we have heard your servants cry out to us in the wilderness. We've heard the cry of repentance and restoration, and we want to respond. We've heard that you are offering forgiveness of sins, and we want to hear your mercy spoken over us. We've heard that you are baptizing with water and with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Cleanse us. Make us new. We've heard that you are ushering in a reign of peace, and we want to see your kingdom when it comes. God, our sins are many, but your mercy is great. Our vision is dim, but your coming is at hand. Our hope is feeble, but your promises stand forever. God, the word stands in need of you. Everywhere we look, we see need of you for your coming, for your restoration, for your peace, for your transformation. On the second Sunday of Advent, we pray for the nations to know your truth and your light. We pray for the poor, the hungry, and the needy. We pray for those who are spiritually hungry and poor in spirit. May they come to know the living water and to drink deeply from your well. We pray for those who face Christmas alone or sick or homeless or destitute. Jesus Christ, light from true light, be the light in the darkness. God, the hour of your coming draws near again. Make us ready in our hearts, in our minds, in our souls. And let us pray together the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. That will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Well, good morning, everybody. It's good to see you all, and happy Advent to one and all. Thank you so much for the way that you gathered in this place today. Not only did you make reservations, but you're wearing your mask, your social distancing, and when you do that, you create a really safe place for people to come and worship here in this place. And if you're worshiping online with us, we want to say a special welcome to you as well. We're so grateful that the body of Christ can be together today. We're really excited about what's going to be happening in a few weeks as we celebrate the birth of our Lord during our Christmas Eve services. And, and this year, we're actually expanding our services to include at least five, and we're going to add a, a service on Christmas Eve, Eve on December 23rd. The schedule's there on your screen, and we really encourage you to please go online and make a reservation for when you and your loved ones would want to join us. Already the reservations are opened up, and already the reservations are pouring in. And this, again, is our way is to, to ensure that we can welcome you appropriately and to also make sure that we can, uh, can maintain that safe environment for people to gather. This has been truly an unprecedented year for all of us, has it not? It's been some uh, amazing challenges that we've all faced. And, but way beyond that, this has been an incredible year of ministry for our church. And in the face of um, really insurmountable odds and facing things that we as a community and as a faith community have never experienced before, we've actually advanced the work of the kingdom of God. Um, we've been able to reach out to our needy, not just financially, but with hands-on support in ways that we would never have dreamed possible. Our ministry to children and our ministry to students have, have gone way beyond what we thought possible as well. Um, we have uh, been focusing on our care and love and support to our senior adults in our congregation and in our church family, and, and that has been such a, a beautiful thing to see. And, and we've also expanded our reach this year through our digital ministry space. Um, far beyond, exponentially beyond what we thought possible. And all of this um, was God using your prayers, your service, and your giving to transform a time of challenge into a wonderful, beautiful time of opportunity uh, for the church. So thank you so much for your faithfulness in all of those areas throughout this past year. And we're excited for what God has in store for us in 2021, but to get there, we really need to finish strong this year. So I'm, I'm here today to let you know that we want to enter the, same, the new year with the same boldness and sense of vision and sense of calling uh, that we've lived out uh, this uh, 2020. So you can help us do that in a couple of ways. One is if you haven't filled out a pledge card, I encourage you to please do so. Um, this is our way, I think, personally, uh, for Monica and I, uh, a way of expressing our commitment uh, to God as well as to our church family. And maybe you've never done a pledge card before, and, and that's okay. I would encourage you to do it um, and just do it prayerfully and just ask God to uh, take your uh, gifts and use them for the work of His kingdom. And if, if you have a, a physical pledge card, maybe you've received it in the mail or maybe you've picked it up at the back as you come in, you can drop those off in the offering baskets or just mail them to the church. And you can also do it online. And Monica and I are going to do our pledge this year online and see how that works. So uh, that's one of the ways that you can help us finish of the year strong because our, our church leadership will use that to kind of help us discern the way forward, and it'll really launch us in with a sense of confidence into the coming year. Another way to help us finish strong is by helping us uh, 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 with our financial gifts in December. You know, the needs of our community and the ministries that God's called us to, um, they, they really peak out in December, so uh, the gifts that you offer to us will be put to really, really good use. So I encourage you to help us finish uh, strong in the month of December so that as we lean into the new year, uh, we can really have the, the wind blowing in our sails uh, to what God's calling us to in the future. So if you'd like to give and share in partnership with us in ministry, you can leave your 
uh, gifts at the, in offering baskets in the back as you go. Or if you prefer, you can mail your gifts to the address on your screen. Or you can also um, go online and click that giving tab, and it shows you all kinds of ways that you can give uh, to the church. And you can also just text, uh, text the word first hope, because hope is what we are all about, to 44321. Please know as you give, um, it'll go to the work of God in our community and in the world uh, for the sake of others. Uh, praise be to God. Let's pray. Father, may you use our gifts and may you use our lives to boldly share the love of Jesus Christ and bring hope to the world. It's in his name we pray. Amen.
Today's scripture reading is from the prophecy of Isaiah, chapter 42, verses 1 through 9. Hear the word of the Lord. Here is my servant whom I'm a, who I uphold, my chosen one in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him, and he will bring justice to the nations. He will not shout or cry out or raise his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out. In faithfulness, he will bring forth justice. He will not falter or be discouraged till he establishes judgment on earth. In his teaching, the islands will put their hope. This is what God the Lord says, the creator of the heavens who stretched them out, who spreads out the earth with all that springs from it, who gives breath to its people and life to those who walk on it. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness, I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you and will make you to be a covenant for the people and a light for the Gentiles. To open the eyes that are blind, to free captives from prison, and to release from the dungeon those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord. That is my name. I will not yield my glory to another or my praise to idols. See, the former things that have taken place and new things I declare. Before they spring into being, I announce them to you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Brian. And I still marvel at how our bell choirs do that. How do you hold four bells in your hand at once? I could only hold one and it went ba-boom, ba-boom. Uh, I can mess up bells real easy, and so I just loved them sharing a holy night with us today. So our theme for Advent is let there be light. Those are the first four words that God speaks in creation. And from there on through the Bible, having light shine through all of creation becomes a passion and a theme. And so Today, we want to also anchor that a little bit because this idea of light shining in the darkness is the central theme of our whole uh, preaching series. And it comes from John 1, verses 1 through 18. I want to lift up two verses from John chapter 1 and then bounce that off our scripture lesson in Isaiah 42. And the first verse is, is verse 4 that says, In him was life and the life was the light of people. One of the favorite things that Tina and I love to do at Christmas time is to go looking at Christmas lights. Yes, we like the trail of lights and all of that that goes with that, but even more, we just like going into neighborhoods and seeing what people do with their houses. Here's one up that, that I would show you. Uh, you know, these are some people, I don't know how they do this, nor do I want to see what their electric bill is. You know, another thing, having grown up in the Northeast, uh, was that we sometimes would go up to New York City and go into Rockefeller Center and see the beautiful Christmas trees there in Rockefeller Center. Uh, it's, it's an amazing thing. It's a natural Christmas tree that is special, uh, especially selected. And then after that, uh, it's adorned with all of those lights. The lights are impressive. They're also artificial. I want to talk about a, a different kind of light. The, the light that is captured in stained glass windows or through stained glass windows. Uh, the largest stained glass window in the world now is in a United Methodist congregation. It, it, is, it is in the Church of the Resurrection in the Kansas City area, and it as you can see there, it is gorgeous. It, it covers the whole front of the sanctuary. It goes from the Garden of Eden all the way to the Tree of Life. So it's all of the scriptures, has Christ at the center. And yes, there is a place for Advent and the birth of Christ in that window. Th that window cost $3 million to fashion. You know, what an impressive masterpiece and a work of art. Then here's a one that I think you might find a little more familiar. 
Let's bring that next one up. Okay, that one you know as our own uh, cross window. But of course, this is the way most people see it all through the week. They don't see it with all of the glory that it is because in order to see that, you have to see it like we see it in the light. Let's bring that picture up. So, when I think about what God wants to do in our own lives, I think of us much like stained glass windows. In verse 9 of John chapter 1, it says that the true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. The Bible says that each of us are made in God's image. That, that means that we are reflections of God's light, God's holiness, God's creativity, and God's love. Jesus says on the, in the eighth chapter of John, I am the light of the world, about himself. But in the fifth chapter of Matthew, verse 14, he says, you are the light of the world. And then he says that we are not supposed to have our light in hiding like being a, under a basket, but instead our light is to be displayed for all to see. But the truth is, our light is often hidden for lots of reasons. It can be hidden because we have compared our light to other people, and we've decided that someone else's light is better, brighter, or more valuable. And, and in fact, we may want to make our light more like other people's light. We, we live in a celebrity culture, a hero culture, and we're afraid to let our own light be good enough in its own right. Yet the Bible says something very different about you, that you are God's masterpiece and that God shines in you uniquely. Now, sometimes our, our, our light is hidden because we go through experiences of hurt and rejection. And, and so out of that, we decide maybe that our light is no longer wanted. Maybe you're bringing a little of that uh, this Advent season. And a particular kind of hurt that comes in there is the hurt that comes through loss, uh, loss through divorce or death. And if you watch, the eyes of people who are going through those experiences are, are kind of darkened. The, the, there's a sadness and a sense of, of emptiness there, and so the creativity wanes, uh, you know, the enthusiasm wanes. There's just a time where the light is hidden for a while. And, and then there is the light that is sometimes hidden because of our sin, uh, the things that, that we do and that we say that we wish we hadn't done, that we can't get up from, uh, or it's, it's a sinful lifestyle that we're in, and so we are losing what is uniquely ours. Or maybe that darkness is the, the hidden, light is hidden because of shame, meaning someone has done or said something to us, and made us feel less than. And the truth is, our light can be hidden for years. So in Advent, we are invited to deal with our hidden places and to hear a fresh word from God. There, there's a beautiful song by Stephanie Gretzinger that, that invites us to, in her words, come out of hiding, you're safe here with me, there's no need to cover what I already see. You've got your reasons, but I hold your peace. You've been on lockdown, and I hold the key. I'll be your lighthouse when you're lost at sea, and I will illuminate everything. Have you noticed that in the whole Advent story that it's all about having God's light shining in the places in the hidden places? Jesus is born to lowly, poverty-stricken Nazarenes where everybody knew there was no light. I mean, this is uh, minuscule light, uh, insignificant light, and yet that's where the light of the world is born and there forever. Let that kind of just sit with you a moment.
And then it's the, the light of the heavens, so the, the glory of God appears to no count, untrustworthy, uh, scared to death shepherds. And so then they have to go from house to house, looking in the hidden places for this child that was born, that's the savior of the world. And, and finally, when they find the child, they go from there and they can't keep their light quiet. It's untrustworthy light that becomes glorious light. And then how about those magi? Stargazers, eccentric magicians, uh, you know, just looking for something lucky in the sky. And yet there is this strange star that starts to move. And they follow that star and it takes them uh, to the Christ child where it stops and they come in and they offer their gifts to the newborn king. And it says that what they do is they go home a different way. Uh, I like to think they also went home different people. And so what we have here is superstitious light that becomes life-changing light. The bottom here is, bottom line here is that the, the light of Christ comes to the hidden places, even the hidden places of our own heart. I wonder if Christ is coming afresh to your hidden places. So in our scripture lesson for today, we have the prophecy of Isaiah, where it says that the Spirit of the Lord has come upon God's servant. But notice, even its language is kind of hidden. It'll say, um, doesn't come shouting in the streets, uh, doesn't, a, a bruised uh, reed, he won't break. You know, it's, it's going to be gentle, yet there's going to be justice. It's going to be a work of the Spirit, but it, it's, it's not ostentatious. It's not loud. It, it's the light coming in to the quiet places, in the hidden places. Another place it says in chapter 11, that, uh, which we had as part of our lighting of our Advent candle, in Isaiah 11 it says that a shoot uh, will come up from the stump of Jesse. Uh, again, something quiet, something unexpected, but that becomes new light for the world. I have some fears about Christmas. I, I fear that we will sing all the right carols that will light our candles, we'll read the right scriptures, we'll be extra nice to the people around us. And then December 26 comes in and all we're gonna be left with is the trash and the letdown. I have another fear about Christmas, that we will be so caught up in the uh, splendor of Christmas, the, the rocking heavens, the, 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 the moving stars, and the haloed mom and dad and baby, and all the, the special productions that we create around Advent and Christmas, and that we'll miss that Christmas had a goal. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. The goal was, you become the light of the world. Jesus was the newborn king, but that was meant to lead to a newborn you and a newborn me. Jesus, in this story, the, you know, we talk about the Holy Spirit coming on this servant, but that was to be a pattern. Uh, Ezekiel, in his prophecy, says, I will put my spirit upon you and you will live so that the Holy Spirit coming upon this servant sets a whole movement of people just like you and me on whom the Holy Spirit falls on our lives and sets us loose to become more than we'd ever dream. Have you allowed the Spirit of God to free you up to be the unique you that shines his light? And as great as that is, it's only the first step of Christmas and Advent. Isaiah says this servant will be a light to the Gentiles. That's a big statement. A Jewish prophet saying that this servant will be a light to the Gentiles. 
For Jews, they understood themselves to be the chosen people in which God had a unique relationship, and there were the Jews, and there were those who were not Jews. They were called Gentiles. So it was the ultimate us and the ultimate them. Have you noticed how religion does that? Turns us into us and them, but that's not how God does things. So Jesus, in Jesus, God sends light to both the Jew and the Gentile. God sends light to those who weren't supposed to get it. So on Christmas Eve, we're going to be passing candlelight. And uh, not only are we going to be doing it in person, but also uh, for those who are watching online and those who will be joining us on Christmas Eve online, if you will let us know, we will bring you candles so that you can celebrate the light with those who are here in person. But we got some extra candles. And what those are for is for you to take a candle to someone that might be in your neighborhood for whom the light has been a little extra hidden this year, and so they can share in the light of Christ as well. It's a powerful picture of the light of Christ that just keeps shining in new places where light is hidden. And that leads me to talk about one more stained glass window picture. It's actually my favorite one. Let's what a great picture of our church. A light that's on the inside that radiates out to the world. What a great picture this is of your life and how God would use you to, to create an inner light that would radiate out to the world. It's shining with the light only as you can. One of my favorite hymns is, O Little Town of Bethlehem, and many of you know it well. I'm going to sing just the first verse for you, and then we're going to sing it later in the service. But as you hear me sing it, listen closely. What do you hear, and what do you see? O oh, little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless streets, the silent stars go by. Yet in thy dark street shineth the everlasting light, the hopes and fears of all the are met in thee tonight. Yes, Advent is God saying to each one of us to come out of our hidden places and allow the light of Christ to shine through us. That that, that, that light will become brighter. And then that that will become a light that you share with everyone around you as only you can. May this, you know, there's this wonderful verse that's in, in the book of Romans. And it says that all of creation stands on tiptoe for the revealing of the children of God. All of creation waits to see the full revelation of God in you. Everything that you've been given, every opportunity that's been placed before you, there is a greater you that's yet to come out, and it comes out by the power of the Spirit of God. And just like light shining out from you, it blesses the world. In the name of Christ, come out of hiding and be glorious light. And all the people said, amen. So we now come to our time of celebrating Holy Communion. Now, as we celebrate communion today, 
what we're going to be uh, doing is you receive communion as you came in today. If you did not receive those elements, uh, they can be brought to you. Uh, they're all in one package there. And then uh, for those online, we'd invite you at this time to move to uh, get your bread and juice as we share in this light that has come into the world that becomes communion with us. So would you join me in our communion liturgy as we prepare for the Lord's Supper? Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This is the time to lift to the Lord those things that keep your light hidden, to offer them to the Lord so that you might shine fully. Let's have a time where we offer that to the Lord. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. And so now we share the wonder of God and his amazing light and love. Let's join together in our great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ, by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection. You gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. And on the night in which he was betrayed, in which he gave himself for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave us to his disciples, and said, Take eat, this is my body broken for you. Take and do this in remembrance of me. Then when the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine, 
Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Would you join me? Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As we now share in Holy Communion, uh, I invite those who are online to join me as I take the bread and dip it in the cup, the body of Christ broken for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. I also invite those present to take the bread and the cup in the name of Christ. Dear Lord, we thank you for this holy time for you and with you and this holy season. Lord, thanks for not leaving us hidden. Thanks for mercy and the power of your spirit that makes us new. In the name of Christ, amen. Our closing hymn for our service today is O Little Town of Bethlehem. Would you stand, please, as we sing? What a joy it has been to share in worship with you, but now the most important part of our time together takes place. For the rest of this day and the rest of this week, you get to shine your light that God has uniquely placed in you. Do it boldly. Do it lovingly. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and all the people said, Amen. Amen.